Bancroft blow, Cameron concussed as WA chase a three-peat. Matthew Wade and Hilton Cartwright join us to preview the Sheffield Shield final. Is David Warner a shoe-in for the T20 World Cup? Simon Cadditch isn't convinced. And we celebrate Australia's champions in the WPL. Let's go around the wicket. Hello and welcome to Around the Wicket, a special Sheffield Shield final edition. I'm Narrowly Meadows. I've got Simon Kadich alongside me, a four-time Sheffield Shield champion, two with New South Wales, two with Western Australia. Surely on this occasion, Kat, you're a West Aussie. I'm definitely a West Aussie, but I reckon I'm going to cop it today from a couple of Tassie boys because <laughs> we lost a couple for New South Wales down at Bell Reeve, and I'm sure I'm not going to hear the end of it today. Paney is not far away, but we need to get to another uh, another Tasmanian, sorry, in Matthew Wade, who joins us now. He'll be a part of the Shield final, but also, Wadey, you're responsible for Nice Gary. You were bowling in two test matches under two different captains, despite being a keeper, you're known for the niggle. You're known for so many things across the course of your career. Four test hundreds as well. It's been an astonishing first class career. You're still going on in the white ball cricket, but congratulations as you announce your retirement, trying to go out with a big Sheffield Shield win. Four victories for Victoria. This would be the first for Tassie, your home state. What would it mean? Thanks for that. That was a nice introduction. Um, <laughs> no, nah, it'd be amazing. Yeah, as you said, I've I managed to spend a lot of time in Victoria and have um, sustained success there for a long period of time. So um, I've been in uh, Tassie now for seven or eight years and um, we made the Shield final, I think, in my first or second year and um, didn't get over the line against Queensland. So, yeah, it'd be a nice reward to a little cherry on top of my first class career if we could get the um, chocolates this week. And Wadey, there's some big news out of Perth overnight with uh, Cameron Bancroft being ruled out with concussion. What's been the mood around the Tasmania camp after yeah. hearing that news? Yeah, we perked up at the airport, Kato. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, he's, been... <laughs> no, he's been in terrific form and um, piled on runs over the last few years in Shield cricket. So, um, yeah, when we landed in um, Perth uh, last night, we uh, a few of the phones were up saying that... Uh, Bangers was out, so um, yeah, I hope he's okay. But um, it uh, it isn't a bad thing for us not to have to bowl to him here. His uh, his record is phenomenal here. He finds a way to to pile on big runs at the Wacker. So that's um, one person we don't have to worry about. But as we know, the uh, WA have got uh, plenty of depth, and next man up will be just as difficult, I'm sure. Speaking of depth, I wanted to ask you about Bo Webster. He has put together an unbelievable shield season, one out of the box, and he's the leading run scorer just ahead of Cam Bancroft, averaging over 60 this season. What has he brought to the team, and do you think he's got what it takes to play in the green and gold and take that next step up? Yeah, he's been huge. Um, yeah, there's not too many guys that are close to a thousand runs and you know pushing on 25, 26 wickets um, hasn't been done all that much. So um, he's just a really relaxed character. He's one of the only guys that I know that doesn't overthink the game. He, he comes in and just um, plays the way that he plays. I think uh, he went to England last year, which was big for him just to keep playing cricket. He's one of those guys that doesn't need to sit around and get stallion. He's just keep playing as much as he can. So he did that last year, and you're seeing the rewards now. Um, you know, he made the he made the call to bowl seam up only probably three seasons ago now. I think he was bowling off spin before that, and that's been really big for us as a team. It means we can play a spinner at Bell Reeve, and, um, you know, he's been as handy with the ball as he has at the bat this season. So um, uh, to answer the second question, yeah, I, I said this week that I think if that Mitch Marsh position, if um, Mitch got injured, um, that number six that just needs to bowl your four or five overs a day is exactly what Bo's going to give you. And the form he's in, he's just going out and watching the ball. And, um, you know, when guys get in that nick, as soon as you pick them, they're going to do well. So, yeah, it wouldn't surprise me if he gets an opportunity if something in that position came up. Now, Wadey, we talked a little bit before about uh, you being renowned for the niggle and you obviously had a long career. I don't think we had any niggle when we played many moons ago against each other. But um, looking back on your career... You know, what has it been that's transformed you from the start when you were renowned for that and then to where you've been now at the end of your career in captaining Australia? I was told to stay away from you, Kat. That wasn't too much. <laughs> I wasn't engaging too much into that. Um, yeah, I think it's just the evolution of the way the game is being played now as well. Um, you know, off the back of what happened in South Africa, I just think it was a cultural change in the way that... Um, Australian cricket went about it and, um, yeah, probably me personally had to sit back and, you know, adapt to the way that the, that we were going about it. So, um, 
yeah, I was young and brash at Victoria and didn't really know any better. I came out of a an AFL kind of background as well, which is quite competitive. So it kind of just leaked into the way that I play cricket. And then I suppose at the back end of my career for Tassie, I've just found a way to channel it. I know that it really enhances my performance if I can engage in the contest. But um, there is certainly a line now that's moved a long way from where it was 10 years ago. And um, you've just got to know when to use it and how to use it a little bit more with the older you get. And I've, I've managed to do that a little bit more in the last five or six years. I've got to say, Wadey, yes, you've scored more than 9,000 first-class runs, but for me, one of my favourite moments covering your illustrious career was that moment that Pup said, mate, we need wickets, I'm going to give you the ball. Husey (laughs) took the gloves. The look on his face in that moment was just so precious. But you that night in the pub, your dad sent you a screenshot of your speeds and you then went around the pub (laughs) going 132.1, 132.1 for the entire evening. What's your favourite? quirky moment of your career yeah it certainly wasn't pup saying that i think i was the one saying i need to take a wicket get me on so, <laughs> um nah i grew up playing juniors as a bowler as well so um any opportunity to grab the ball in a, in a first class game i was jumping at but yeah i was pretty excited when i saw the speeds um i haven't touched them again for a long time don't worry about that and i've given up bowling but no nah, that was it that was a fun one I, that footage came up not long ago actually when i announced for a time i think this week and just to see the small one Husey's face, I think he was more happy to be behind the stumps having a keepers um, I was to to have a bowl. But yeah, that was certainly a quirky moment. There's been there's been plenty throughout my career. I've you know I call myself the the first genuine all rounder, bat bowl, field <laughs> keep. So um, hopefully I can be remembered for that maybe. <laughs> and Wadey, you've made a big decision this week to obviously finish your career and and play in a Sheffield Shield final, which for some players I don't always get that opportunity. And you're going to miss the start of the IPL for Gujarat. Was that a tough decision to make? And do you think that moving forward, CA should set a precedent with this, particularly for guys like, say, Cameron Green or Mitch Marsh that could have played for WA this week? Yeah, I think you know, playing shield cricket has been such a big part of my my journey and um, the opportunity, like you said, to play in a shield final was one that I didn't want to get, give up on. I'm, I'm very blessed and lucky to have um, Vikram Solanke at Gujarat, who's played a lot of first class cricket and kind of understands the position that I was in this year and, and gave me the opportunity to, to stay home and miss a few games of IPL. So, um, yeah, I think I'm lucky that I've got a, a franchise that understanding and was happy to roll with the punches a little bit. I'm sure there's other guys that don't have um, that luxury. Um, but yeah, it's an important part of domestic Australian cricket. I think especially a final, it's the first time that you see domestic players playing under pressure um, like you do at the next level. You know, you've got one chance. It's on TV, televised, which is another element that guys um, have to deal with. So it's been really important in my development over the years to play in those big finals and get, and build confidence that you can do it under under that kind of scrutiny and that kind of pressure at the next level. So, yeah, it would be great to see all those guys playing as much as they can, but um, we all understand that um, IPL is a big tournament and there's commitments that they've got to fulfil as well. Don't lie, Wade. You are stoked that Cameron Green and Mitch Marsh aren't available for this one. Caddo, I know you're really strong on this, so we're going to get your own pain and thoughts shortly. But, Wadey, thank you so much. Um, I'd love to say all the best. I want you to do well in this Shield final, but let's be honest, I'm a West Aussie here. But thanks so much for your time oh, and all the best in a huge year ahead. The T20 World Cup as well that you're hoping to be a part of. Thanks for your time. Thank you very much, guys. It was good. Oh, we love Matthew Wade. Bit of niggle and always plenty of personality. Don't go anywhere, though, because speaking of those two things, plenty more coming up with Tim Payne. West Australia's Hilton Cartwright still to come on around the wicket, but it's time now to bring in another Tasmanian. Tim Payne, look at the cap on his head. He is absolutely owning this space right now. Payne, you won two Shield titles, and one of them was against this man, Simon Kadich. I'll leave the floor to you to start things off. Yeah, no, good day. That first, Tassie's first ever Shield win. I caught Caddo, actually, in the second innings after... Him and Ben Hilfenhaus had a bit of a back and forth uh, about Caddo not playing the pull shot and Hilfie had deep square, which was me. Caddo wanted deep square up. Dan Marsh kept telling me to go back. The game stopped for a little bit. Finally, they got on with it. Next ball, Hilf bounced him. Caddo pulled it straight to me <laughs> on your way. Caddo, thanks for coming. Yeah, it was a pretty easy wicket, wasn't it, back in those days? It was a fantastic well, win for Tassie. 
Well, I'd hate to see your numbers against Tassie. I don't think there was too many shoe games I played where Caddo didn't get 100 against us. Two so, player so of the match performances in finals, Caddo, as well. So he goes, okay, I, I believe, though, Painty, you're putting a hand up to make the Tassie 11. Tell me more. Yeah, no, I did ring uh, Jeff Vaughan. I got a little unbeaten 100 in great cricket on the weekend, so I've dusted <laughs> off the cap, uh, sent him a phone call and said if there's any concussion subs needed, particularly with the wicketkeeper, I'll be ready to go. I'm just a phone call away. <laughs> Gary's bad. I love it. Now, we just spoke to Matthew Wade and talking about the fact that he's going to miss a couple of IPL games in order to play this Shield final. Caddo, you're a bit fired up about this. You'd love to see it as a, a precedent set that players are more available for the Shield final rather than the opening rounds of the IPL. Yeah, obviously, look, there's a, a clash, and we understand why the IPL takes precedent because some of these guys, in particular Cameron Green, are on huge deals, and their IPL teams expect them to be there on time, and I get that. And Cricket Australia reaped the windfall from that as well. But I guess where I'm coming from is the inconsistency around the fact that, you know, Cameron Green only a few weeks ago played against Tasmania, got a good 100 in the shield down there, which helped him in his preparations for that New Zealand tour. Did well... Obviously played well in that first test, got the 170 odd not out, and then, you know, now about a week or two later, isn't going to play. So I, I get why with the IPL, but ideally, like Matthew Wade's doing, it'd be great to see that, you know, the ability for these players to play for another few days, finish that, win hopefully a title with their teammates, which they've, you know, achieved throughout the year, um, and then move on to the IPL after that for the sake of maybe one, two IPL games. But I get why, you know, money talks. What do you reckon, Payne? Yeah, I couldn't agree more. I think the Shield final is Australian domestic cricket showpiece event and I'd love to see Cricket Australia stand up a little bit more and just say, listen, you've got our players, but they're going to be there. How many players are going to affect each year? It's, it's a couple. Yeah. Uh, Matthew Wade was lucky enough to let go, to be let go. Uh, Cameron Green hasn't been. Um, and obviously Ricky Ponning's got his tentacles all over Mitch Marsh uh, from the Tasmania review <laughs> and wouldn't release him from Delhi. So we've done the trick on Mitch beautifully. Um, and now Cameron Bancroft's out as well. So uh, things are going well for Tassie. But, no, I would love to see all the players made available for what is the showpiece event of Australian domestic cricket. So IPL starts this weekend. Interesting to keep an eye on David Warner. How important is his campaign for the T20 World Cup? It's big purely because, you know, his last couple of years in the IPL, particularly two years ago, I think it was for Sunrisers, where, you know, he got flicked and got dropped. You know, that had an impact. And then he's obviously moved to Delhi. And he probably hasn't been at his run scoring best there compared to when he was at his you know, peak of his powers. So I think with Travis Head emerging and Mitch Marsh at the top of the order, and I think Josh Inglis emerged on that recent tour to India late last year in 2023 where he got the 100 off 50 balls, I think, in Vizag in the first game. So, And Matthew Wade's done a good job in that finishing role, and we also know Tim David's in there, Maxwell's in career best form. So there's going to be a bit of a squeeze on there. So I think he needs a good IPL. I still think he'll go to that World Cup, but I, I wouldn't say that he's a shoe in at this point in time. So you potentially think they go into that opening game without him in the 11? Well, I think it's going to come down to form. And I think that's how... I know he's done well recently against the West Indies, but these is completely different uh, conditions in, you know, US. What do you think, Painting, about Jake Fraser-McGurk getting an opportunity? Next explosive Aussie batter coming through. He gets an injury replacement call for the IPL. How's he going to go on the big stage? Oh, I'm sure he'll lap it up, the rooster he loves. It seems to me the bigger the game, the bigger the moment, the, the better he plays. So he's got a bit of star factor about it. You can see it against him when you've played state cricket. I've coached against him in BBL. Uh, he's got a bit of David Warner about him. He loves the big occasion and he's supremely talented. So uh, hopefully he gets a game. But one guy that um, Caddo left off the list there with the Australian side is Matthew Short, who I work with at the Adelaide Strikers as well. And he's going to be another one that's going to be putting pressure on David Warner in the coming months. Um, I don't know how much cricket he's got, but yeah, David Warner's got IPL cricket uh, and it's it's a long tournament. So you're going to see really clearly how he's going uh, and no doubt they'll be watching him really closely. A fascinating IPL coming up with the T20 World Cup just around the corner and we'll be with you on Around the Wicket right throughout the IPL. But Payne, fascinating looking at the leadership of Mumbai. Hardik Pandya comes from Gujarat Titans back into the Mumbai fold, takes the captaincy. Rohit Sharma, five-time champion, will no longer be captain but will still be in the Mumbai Indians fold. It's an interesting dynamic. How do you think it's going to go? 
I'd be fascinated to watch that as much as I am to watch Jake Fraser McGurk if he does get a game. It seemed to me, reading between the lines or reading tweets from family members, that Rohit Sharma wasn't thrilled to not be the captain. And rightly so, I think he's done an amazing job at that franchise. No one can argue that. He's done a great job uh, captaining India. He's obviously a world class player, an extremely popular player in both the Indian team and the Mumbai Indians. So, uh, there was an old saying, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. So um, I'm fascinated to see how that goes. Could it all go pear-shaped? I don't think it will because I think I expect Mumbai to win it. I think I can understand where Payne is coming from because that dynamic, and I don't know how close Hardik and Rohit are and the level of mutual respect they have for each other. I'd assume that it would be fine because they have been teammates for so many years. But it is a different dynamic because you've got you know, the new ball getting the, the role after he did so well at Gujarat and they won the title in their very first year and he did a great job as skipper. And then you got the old ball who's been there and done it five titles, probably still deserves it, but the Mumbai management have decided to hand over the reins. And if he takes that on the chin and, and you know, plays as well as he can, then it'll be no issue given that, you know, Boomer's back this year and they've got a star-studded lineup. Virat Kohli as well, a long layoff. He's coming back. He says he's excited. He's happy to be back in the fold after coming to the camp. How do you think he's going to go? Oh, I think he'd be fine because I think having been in that camp with them a few years ago and seeing the energy that he brings to the group and the level of experience and professionalism, um, having had a break and been extended time with his family, I think he'll be coming back uh, re-energised and wanting to prove a point. And I think inspired by the RCB women winning their first ever title. So I think hopefully that inspires the RCB boys to fire up and have a great tournament. Well, let's talk about that because you were the RCB coach. Elise Perry, Sophie Mullen, you both starred in the final. Elise Perry, her legacy in the game, it's hard to compare men to women, especially when it comes to test cricket because the women just haven't played as much. But as as far as a name goes and what she's done for the game, are there many bigger? Not in female sport because we saw the effect of the Matildas on the nation last year during the World Cup. Let's not forget that Elise Perry was a Matilda back in the day um, and is a dual international, which is obviously a very rare achievement. And I think what she's achieved in the game of cricket is testament to you know, her longevity, her skill and her adaptability because this IPL, she's taken her game to another level, particularly with the power game that she showed where in previous years there was talk about what her best position in the lineup was. Well, she's powered through that this tournament and been the main reason why RCB have won that title. Well, Tim Payne, thank you very much for your time on Around the Wicket. Too many Tasmanians, though, I reckon, Caro. <laughs> time to get Hilton Cartwright involved in the show. He's coming up next. Don't go anywhere. Back to Around the Wicket. Now that we've gotten rid of the Tasmanians, let's bring in a West Australian. All-rounder Hilton Cartwright joins us. Hilton, thanks so much for your time on Around the Wicket. I've got to start by asking you, no Cameron Bancroft, what is going on? What has happened there? Oh, it's just been an unbelievable circus of events this whole year. I mean, we've had injuries galore. Obviously, Ash Turner for the Scorchers and early on for our season. Jason Berendorf a few days ago, breaking his leg. And now um, to top things off, um, Cameron Bancroft having a concussion. So, I mean, it is just, it's unexplainable how many injury, injuries we've had this year. Um, but, I mean, it gives us a little bit of extra motivation going into this week, knowing that our back's against the wall. Thankfully, we're on our home paddock. And, um, yeah, we'll see how we go. So it turns out he's fallen off his bike and managed to concuss himself days out of trying to go for a three-peat for WA. How big a loss is he? Number two run scorer throughout the season, uber consistent over many Shield seasons now. How big a loss is he? Oh, I think just his overall his experience is a massive loss, let alone the runs that he's been making for us recently at the top of the order. We know how important and how um, pivotal his partnership with Sam Whiteman has been at the top of the order. Um, but almost the bigger hole that he's leaving for us is our second gripper. Uh, he's been second grip for about 10 years now. So we're having a headache yesterday. We're doing a bit of a, um, a drill out on the, on the oval to work out who's going to be second gripper. 
Um, so as long as his batting, as much as his batting is going to hurt us, we're just trying to work out who our second grip is going to be just as much. <laughs> you just never know what you've got until it's gone, do you? Um, let's talk about yeah, the pressure yeah, exactly. that you've got playing at the WACA yet again. Um, obviously, it came down to that last fixture of Shield games to decide that it was going to be at the WACA. Does it heap pressure on? Do you relish the opportunity? How are you feeling about it? Yeah, I'm certainly very nervous. Um, I think it's a good thing. It shows that you care, that you really want to do well. But um, if you're ever going to go for three in a row, I mean, if you're ever going to have a crack at winning a Shield title, it's obviously every speak about every team and every player would obviously want to play at their home ground. Um, going into that last picture, as you said, we could have been not even in this game or we could have been playing down at Tassie. Um, and luck fell our way and we, we got the result that we wanted and now we're on our home paddock. So that's a huge... Um, I guess, advantage for us, having guys who have played here the whole year, played here over a number of years, to be able to exploit our conditions. And um, Tazia coming off the back of three home games themselves um, as almost two very different wickets in how they play. Obviously, they're both quite green, but the bounce we get here in comparison to the bounce down at Tazzy might be a quite, a quite a large part in how the first couple of days plays out. Hilton, I can hear the anticipation and the excitement on your face. You're like a kid in a candy store going for the three-peat, as you say. But under Adam Voges, going for his ninth title as coach of either WA or the Perth Scorchers, a remarkable record in such a short space of time. Can you give us an insight into what he brings to this WA outfit? Oh, it's it's like you say, that that is one of the best records I think you'll see in a, in a coaching career. Of, I think it's only spanned over five years. Um, I think the, the biggest thing he brings out is he's obviously got a great understanding of the game. He was a, an extremely intelligent player and the way that he's uh, worked through that into his coaching and understood how players go about their business, not just how they play technically, but how they um, prepare mentally, I think has been a huge positive and a, um, a massive bow to his, to his, uh, his a ching, uh, not a ching in his armour, massive bow in his armour and the way that he approaches net sessions, he watches how guys go. Um, offers his, his advice, doesn't tell each individual how to play, but he really understands that someone like Cameron Bancroft's obviously going to take his time scoring his runs, whereas someone like Josh Phillippe is going to be playing quite um, an aggressive style of play and he really supports the way that guys go about their own ways. You obviously don't have Cameron Bancroft, you don't have the IPL guys like Marsh and Cameron Green. What do you have? What do you bring to the table in this final? I think the... I think we've said it probably every year. The, the biggest advantage I think we've got over a lot of other teams is how much we enjoy each other, just not on the cricket field, but outside the cricket field. The, I guess the, the buzzword, the, the culture in cricket that we've got over here in the West is something I've never experienced anywhere else in the world. Um, not to say I've travelled the world and played all these different competitions, but um, the, the camaraderie that we have with, with each other, how well we understand each other's games, I think, we know when a guy's having an off day and we can walk up to him, give a pat on the back and um, show empathy towards them, seeing how they're going and know which way and how to pick them up and, and help them perform better. I think that's a huge advantage that we've had and a, and a big part of our success over the last three years. Just finally, what's the key to beating Tassie, do you think? Well, I think we've seen over their last three to four games, um, they obviously play on a green wicket like we do, but... Um, I mean, it's not reinventing the wheel. It's bowling good balls at the top of the stumps. Um, they've had a few collapses in those games. Um, obviously, the the wickets have suited bowling, fast bowling. So I think it's not going to be it's not going to be rocket science around that. I think the wicket's going to play play its part on on how much it's going to move around. Uh, we know they like to play their shots. They're going to come pretty hard. They have done over the, the course of the year, and they've really backed their skill and done done very well at it and had a lot of success. I think the the best part about our bowlers is holding their length, holding their line um, and letting the wicket do a lot of, a lot of that talking. So um, yeah, they've had a few collapses, not to say they're going to will, will or won't have one over the next five days, um, but it's certainly a, a huge part in, in, in how we're going to have success against them. Hilton, I can feel the enthusiasm coming through the screen. And I've got to say, as a, a young West Aussie kid who grew up sitting on that grass at the Wacker cheering for WA, Go Western Australia, let's be honest. Thanks so much for your time and all the best in the final. Absolutely. Uh, thank you so much for having me. It's been great. Great to have Hilton Cartwright join us ahead of the Shield final. Don't go anywhere and around the wicket because Simon Cadditch is going to be next to take on the short stuff.
see the day that Justin Langer was dancing, Simon Cadditch. Time to take on the short stuff. What are your thoughts of your former teammate? Well, he's obviously let whatever thinning hair he's got left, <laughs> he's let it down because he's gone and had a couple of beers and got on the dance floor because that's unheard of. Oh, that's not the Justin Langer I know. I don't think I've ever seen him on the dance floor. <laughs> Shots fired from Simon <laughs> Cadditch to Justin Langer. Um, speaking of... Is this the most extraordinary thing you've ever seen? Have you seen this coming? Kevin Peterson getting involved in the royal affairs with a tweet today. What are your thoughts on that? Well, I'm not on social media, but you've just shown me the tweet and uh, KP's just uh, big noted himself, hasn't he? <laughs> he says he sees Will and Kate every day. I feel like this is the most Kevin Peterson thing we've ever seen. Oh, without a doubt. <laughs> okay. Turning to a more serious note, Cricket Australia have decided to cancel the bilateral series against or postpone against Afghanistan. It was due for August. This comes off the back of doing it in 2023 as well. They say that talking to the government that conditions for women and girls are only getting worse. Afghanistan say it's hypocritical because Australia play in World Cups, big bash players are involved. What do you think? Yeah, this is a really tricky situation. I understand why CA have made this decision because it's not right what's happening there in Afghanistan to women and children and I guess they're making a stand against that and, and, and it's an example of obviously sport and politics not mixing but I feel sorry for the players because during that last World Cup the Afghans brought so much joy to not only their people but a lot of cricket loving people around the world. They've got a lot of skill in their group and they love playing against Australia. It's just that it keeps getting postponed and I guess late in the piece too, it's now March and this was due to be played in sort of mid-August so it's disappointing that it's it's taken you know this long to get this uh, decision to be reached. We don't know what the future is of the Gabba. How do you feel about it? Yeah, look, always sad about a venue like the Gabba that's so historic with the wicket that it's you know been so traditional for Australia as a I guess a you know the the fortress that it was until India knocked us off Sorry, there a couple Kat, of years run ago. Sorry, out of time. See you next week. <laughs>